The Languedoc is the largest wine region in France. It was once known for producing swaths of bulk and table wine, but things are different today. Join creative Fabian and I on a journey through this dynamic region in search of great red wine. We'll meet producers both big and small and introduce you to the culinary wonders of this region. The jaunt through this slice of southern France starts right now. Oh, it's so good! Oh. The Bonfils family owns properties all over the Languedoc, and today we're stopping in at Chateau Capitou, which is located in the appellation of La Clape. This chic property has a restaurant and hotel on site, and we meet up with Melanie, who will show us around. So I guess I'm going to get some good footage tonight. It's beautiful. And then we're going to have a walk in the vineyard, and we're going to go to Les Portes for the tasting. I get to ride the golf at. Beep, beep, beep. I missed you. Welcome home, baby. The private villa of Capitul is stunning. And it boasts views over the Appalachian. What do you think about the villa? It's the best thing. I'm moving in right away, Bray. Beautiful place. Wow. And on this side, you're going to have the Syrah, the Grenache Noir. It's a little hot and humid, but we're up for a vineyard walk. It's Roussan. Look at the color. It's all red. The only problem is... <laughs> the mosquitoes! The mosquitoes! I don't know what's worse today, the humidity or the mosquitoes. A quick visit to the cellar to get some shots, and then Melanie sets up the tasting for us. You can make white, red, and rosé in La Clap. Wine King's not the only YouTube channel that has a black glass. Reds in the Appalachian are GSM blends with another permitted grape that I love. The Carignan comes out right away. I love it. I love it. There's one grape that can take oak really well. It is a Syrah. <laughs> right? I love Syrah. Thomas Bonfi joins us and Melanie shows me a wine that stops me in my tracks. This has to have Carignan. Love Carignan. Don't sleep on the grape. I love it, love it, love it. I love that one. Carignan, we are a spy hand, that one because it's a very aged one. I, I love that wine. I'm going to have a little bit more. De... Mosquito! Mathieu? Oh, ah. bonjour. Bonjour, <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> We're ready for a big night at the Chateau's on-site restaurant, Asado. Who's ready Should to party? I think we're ready to party, no, Matthew? Laurent Bonfils welcomes us with an aperitif. Oyster cocktails. Get the uh, oyster in first and hold it. Ça passe bien. Not bad. Laurent is a passionate man with a big, clear vision. For me, my dream is that uh, people from New York wake up and say to, to, to his wife, Hey, my dear, what do you think if we go to Languedoc for two or three days? We want the people, when they drink our wine, remember of the holidays they spend in our place. Laurent, Melanie and Thomas help get the party started with some... <laughs> La Clap is located right on the sea, which means they're fresh... Lemon butter oyster. True to its name, the chefs at Asado really know how to grill meat. Tonight we're having pork, beef, and grilled fish. Tomahawk. Wow, the tomahawk and the Cote de Lucien. Do you approve of the meat? We like the colors. Hey, you want vegetable? You want to poison me, mother we're in France, so the meal ends with cheese and sweet wine. I'm excited about the stinky cheese and the river salt. I love Vendu Naturel, some of the most underrated wines in the world. Fortified wines from the south of France, river salt. Damn good. It smells awesome. You gotta think walnut, almond, dried apricot, leather, toffee. Sure. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit slow this morning. <laughs> You're gonna meet lots of uh, little castles, but there is lots of story around this state and castle lots of charge with that. Chateau Vajelas is in the nearby appellation of Corbière, and the harvest is in full swing. This will go over the vine, the berries will fall down here. Hand harvesting is romanticized. But mechanical harvesting is becoming the way to go if you want wines that don't break the bank. Things I do to try to get a shot. 
The red wines of Corbiere are primarily made of Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedre. Winemaker Christian joins us as Thomas talks about the benefits of machine harvesting. To act quickly, because as you can see today, there's rain, but like maybe in five minutes we won't have the rain, it's because the maturity, you just have it at one moment. You don't have it after, you don't have it before, you have at that specific point. With one team, it could take one morning, for example, to harvest one hectare. A machine, it takes just one hour. We can work night and day with only one guy. Back at the chateau, we check out some of the fresh juice that will become wine. They're moving it to the fermentation yeah. tank. They're basically racking of the juice before putting it back in the tank for fermentation. Wine grapes are a lot sweeter than table grapes. The high sugars are converted to alcohol, and red wines get the color from skins in a process called maceration. Raise the temperature of the wine in the tanks after fermentation. Get the perfect extraction and the perfect balance. Let's see if all that hard work turns into great wine. We stop by a local restaurant to have lunch and taste the wines of Vajelas. Corbière by history has a bad reputation because it used to be one of the region where there was a lot of bulk wine in the past. This smells a lot more expensive than it, than it actually is. It smells great. I like this quite a bit for that kind of price. It's like 14 bucks outside France. These big red wines call for meat, and that's exactly what we're going to get here. Is this the proper way to cook Cote de Boeuf, Fabian? Yeah. I scared people with the camera. Yeah, it seems like. <laughs> We're in a tiny village in the Corbière, so they don't often see a Christian rejoins us and brings us a wine from his family estate, Chateau Mignan. It's delicious, but the Vaugelas Excellence is really what gets me excited. It's quite serious stuff. It's made of Grenache, Syrah, Morvedre, and Carignan. In France, it's all about the food to pair with the wine, and my weapon of choice is this oily standing rib roast. Could not leave France without having some Cote de Boeuf. Apparently, I can't leave the restaurant until I gnaw off the rib. To have off the bone? These two reds go perfectly with my meat. I'd say the trip is off to a fabulous start. It's one of my favorite places. Look how beautiful it is. Who wouldn't want to live and move here? St. Chinian is a large appellation in Languedoc, and Fabian takes me to Maison de Vin in the center of the village. They have a selection of over 80 different winemakers. There are notable whites being made in St. Chinian too. It's got a really nice nose. How much is that wine? 14 euros. Oh. 14 really, really nice wine. It was Grenache Blanc. Yeah. It was on. I really liked this red that I had sent to me a couple of weeks ago and the white is, I think white's, the white's better than the red. A local winemaker stops in and we try his Sierra and Grenache. Tannins are real, it's really silky. No, no wood. No wood. No. No. You, expect, you expect it to be bigger because of the nose, but finally it's very round, very elegant. We move on to a fabulous producer, Masta Albo. Stunning wine, GSM blend. And the acidity there again is stunning. I think we have to keep to this kind of big red wines. So much strawberry, meat, peppery type notes, earth. 70 Grenache, 30 Carignan, huh? What do you like about this wine? Everything. It's like a nice, beautiful girl. The business time is uh, during the summer. Some nice, nice, really nice tastings. Oh yeah, the wines are very, very nice. Yeah. What do you got up here is Saint Chignon, but further up you go, it's Saint Chignon, but the Berlou village, which is one of the rare village appellation of the Languedoc. High above Saint Chinian is Domaine de Cambus, which comes complete with a view. Welcome to my crib. The guest house and winery is run by a proprietor, Martin, and today he has a few guests. So we'll all head down to the cellar together. Only three barrels. Is it just one wine? I'm not a big fan of uh, wooden uh, wines. And you will see when we taste together that the red are naturally concentrated. So if we oak the, the wines, it would be too much. Do you see consumers actually wanting less barrel, less wood? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Young people, they don't care. They tend to look for wines that are more easy to drink. Back at the guest house, we start the tasting, and two wines immediately stand out. I love the Senso, but it's not Appellation Saint Chignon, but whatever. If you watch the channel, you know I'm a huge Carignan fan. This is really, really nice Carignan. Meaty, full of Mediterranean herbs, garrigue, big, round, fruity enough for most people to enjoy, but definitely complex enough. 100% Carignan, and the vineyards are over a century, 1907, 1911 nearby. The potential of the terroir, you can go to the 100% Senso, the 100% Carignan, mm. and then you will see the others. Very good. Are you on retainer fee from Martin? No, <laughs> but I really love the wines. 
Fabian goes on and on about these wines because uh, Martin is his friend, so I have to tell you the truth. They suck. No, I'm kidding. Wonderful, round, easy to drink, super approachable. Sanchinian, guys, I've been super impressed with today. The wines are really, really well priced. Just above his estate, Martin has some old vineyards that are close to 400 meters in elevation. The views up here are stunning, but I want to sneak in a little snack. Martin says three euro per grape because these are really old vines. He's over there, so shh, I'm going to eat it. And so the skins are pretty thin, a lot of juice, a lot of acidity. That's six euro right there. Why is Saint Chinian a great place to produce great wine? Uh, so yeah, Saint Chinian is a. Uh... It's special because of the duality of terroir and because people here kept the really old vineyards as uh, like this one. It's making really interesting grape, uh, even more with the altitude. Yeah, the balance between the concentration of tannins and the freshness is really good and I think it's a wine shape for the future. People want everything right nowadays. They want good wines, well concentrated but still drinkable. And today I think we are, we are capable of doing those wines. So what you get for the, the price in terms of uh, the price quality is really high in the appellation, yeah. People think it's glamorous life, but it's often us rushing from place to place in the morning, right? Don't look at my face. <laughs> I'm not a morning person, like yesterday. What do you think the top most consistent appellations for red wines are in the Languedoc? saint chinian Terrasse du Larzac, and Fougère. And if I would go very niche, I would go definitely to Mont Peru, which is nearby. Deep in the valley, we stop by one of Fabian's favorite spots for a little picnic. Fabian's taking me to drown. We set up and get eating. Jambon persillé. It's a specialty made of pork and a lot of herbs, onions, and a lot of parsley. Head parts from the peak, so you get a bit of uh, neck, a bit of the tongue, a bit of the nose. Here you got classic uh, rosette. Good quality, not a lot of fat, and then little goat cheese from around here. And to pair with it, Cornichon for sure! This episode's like pork -arama. Look at here, it's like you're on holiday 24-7. Amazing place. And if I go up in the mountain, I can get mushrooms. Just on the river, we notice something. You need to paddle. If you don't paddle, the stream takes you and... <laughs> Let's make a little bet and see if any of these kayakers take a spill. Okay. Wait for it! Oh well. Taras du Larzac is high and one of the coolest appellations in the Languedoc. Today we're meeting Crano, a young, passionate producer. So you have problems with the pigs as well? Yes. Yeah. Can you feel it? 10 kilowatt. We start with his rosé made from the grape. Right. Chenonçon. Uh, it's a mix in Grenache and Jurançon, and Jurançon Noir. Another day at the office. This beefy rosé makes it up to the top of Crano's vineyards as we take in the views. Domaine de Ferrasac is a new estate, but it's definitely one to keep your eye on. I am a huge fan of rosé, darker color. Oh, they're having so much fun over there. With, uh, with a little bit of tannin. A quick tour through some of the vineyards before we head to the estate. Domaine de Ferrasac is certified organic for both wine and beef production. The property is a humble place, but one that brims with energy and charisma. Renault currently produces less than 5,000 bottles a year in this space. Not bad for a, a farm that he's working on converting it to a cellar. I think it's actually pretty cool. We head down to the cellar to see a couple of M4s and sip on Ferrusac's entry level red, which is this base cuvee. The Syrah with 40% Grenache is really good. What I want in Syrah, I don't want it to be too fat. I want it to have acidity, these chewy tannins. And I want Syrah to have almost this blood orange type of acidity, which this has. A little bit of meatiness and peppery. When Syrah is really good, it can be really addicting. Out in the courtyard, Renault has guests who stop by to pick up some wine. It's cool up here, which makes it a perfect place to snack on some of Renault's beef products. Starting off with Carpaccio. Excellent. <laughs> Outstanding. But the beef terrain is what really blows my mind. Hard life in France. Mm. <laughs> Let me finish it. Mm. I don't go with the... Mm. Delicious. What a slob, what a slob! Now on to the top red wine, which is 60% Grenache and 40% Syrah. How many points you give? 92, 93. Easy. More in the coming years, definitely. 
In the evening, Harno has something special planned for us. Need much to be happy. Just good food and good wine. <laughs> Renault is cooking us dinner, which includes three different cuts of steak. Um, that we call in French, which is here in the middle of the animal. Then you have l'araignée, which you would translate by spider, so spider steak. This one is more here. The next one, which is anglais in French, is basically some uh, flank steak. It's not local, but I'll never turn down a good champagne and... Cheese. Oh, flat yes. Yeah. Sheep. good. How long is it aged for? He doesn't know, but he knows it's good. I thought Tom was an AOC cheese. It's just the name of the cheese, but it's not an appellation. Blood sausage on the right, and then saucisson à l'ail, uh, garlic sausage. While dinner's being prepared, I have an epiphany. I just stumbled upon the best pairing in the world. Tom, this cheap cheese from Larzac and vintage champagne. Oh, it's so good! Oh. Even like a good parmesan or a good conte or you know, it all depends like it needs to be mature cheese With the Savoy cheese, the champagne tastes like honey You like that cheese? I fucking love it And if you have cheese, rarely have red wine You go for white wine, matured white wine, sweet wine or good bubbles like a nice champagne Okay, enough with the cheese, we're here to taste the beef Demi molle. Okay, which one should I taste first? L'araignée. A lot of yeah. connective tissue. It's almost like carpaccio. It's the same as carpaccio. Ah. Uh -huh. This is the This is hanger or flank. Yeah. My favorite cut. Oh. Anglais. Yeah, but it's so tiny piece always. <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Which cut do you like the best? Three of them. The so, anglais is the best. The texture is crazy. <laughs> uh, it's my baby. <laughs> We've had some wonderful red wine so far, but Masta Domascasac takes it home for us. It was founded by the late Aimé Guibert, who is the star of the documentary Mondovino. Soyons clairs, le vin est mort. Il n'y a pas que le vin, il y a les fromages, hein? il y a les fruits. We meet Emma's sons Basile and Samuel. Basile takes us up to the vineyards of the estate. Master Domas Gassac is one of the wineries that showed that great wine could be made in the Languedoc. And Basile tells me about what happened in the 80s after a big wave of publicity. So when this arrive, we sell everything. My father is there, wow, it's amazing the success, we don't have enough vines, we need to deforest the whole valley. My mum who said, you arrived here, you jump out of the car, you saw the stream, the gas stream, you saw the, the wilderness of the place. So why do you want to destroy that? We head back down to the cellar. How many people do the final blends? It's good. God is doing the, Mother Nature is doing the final blend because we harvest everything and 20 minutes from the vines, then we bring it straight to the, up there. What arrives here and what enters the cellar is perfect. For example, this year we have a lot of frost and normally uh, Chenin Blanc is quite a high part of our blend. It's 20%. This year it's going to be 10%. And that's Mother Nature. The cold weather that comes from the Larzac cold wind make Domas Gassac an amazing place for winemaking. And Emile Penot was saying what you want in the last two months of the harvest a slowest maturation possible. But slowest means not too fast or not too slow, because not too slow, then you have blockage. It's harvest time, and the cellar is getting prepped and clean. What do you think? I like the cellar. It smells good, cool place. The estate is known for its flagship red and white, which are both unique blends, and we get a sneak peek of the 2021 Blanc. Even the fresh pressed juice, super complex, super complex and crunchy, right? Thomas Gassac is very Bordeaux style. Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, but the non-Cabernet, we tend to do short maceration. Seven, 14 days max. We don't want power, we want fruit, we want the smile, we want the music from the south. In the barrel room, Samuel lets us taste the 2020 red from the barrel. We get rid of the sediment because there is no filtration in the red. How long usually does the red spend in oak? 12 to 16 months, depending on the vintage. Beautiful wine, beautiful cellar, all in. The barrel and the tank samples were good. I'm excited to taste from bottle. 
we start with two vintages of the white wine, which is a crazy blend of... Armenia, Sercial from Madeira, Armenia, Cercial. Albareño, Falangina, Fion, Griqueto, Tori. Chila, Chila is from Armenia, yeah, Albareño, Falangina, mostly Viognier, Petit Mansang, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc. <laughs> Gorgeous, honeyed. Do you, do you mind if I do a product placement? You, I'm gonna put it in. Don't, but that's funny. <laughs> you know, you, you see some white. Buy maker. these, buy these. So, um, no, we are a very simple family and. Uh... Yeah, what's the drinking window on this? I think 90% of people who like Thomas Gasset white drink it in the first two, three years. And they got six bottles and that's it. Much older, you, you have a very aristocratic white. It's, it's everything I like about white. You have the, the little grit, that gritty texture. You get nice acidity, but it's not over acidic. You get this salinity. It's, it's almost savory. Onto the red, which is also a crazy blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Petit Pinot, Malbec Pinot Noir, Red Wine. Barbera Nobiolo, Dolcetto, Dolcetto, Bastardo, Saparavi, Tavquervi, Multiple Giano. Did you see Plavitz? Oh, and Plavitz! Holy crap! Mm -hmm. it smells awesome! Leathery, cherry. So I'm a, I'm a very bad guy because I started with 17 and then we did 19, 18, and then we're gonna go 16. We're professional. And then so we can go 11, you know? You know First Growth Bordeaux better than I do. Yeah. So can you compare that? No. It's better to some. It's you have more complex. It's not only Cabernet, so you get more complexity, more freshness, more it's acidity. More approachable. It's 35 euro. You better buy this than the first gross. <laughs> yeah, it's subtle. You've got the smooth tannin. You've got um, the the smile. <laughs> oh, mama! You, lo you like it, mama? You approve? Well, I haven't tasted, but just on the nose. And you can tell it's Cabernet based, but there's some, like a little twinkle on the eye because of all the different grapes. It's, just, it's like you got a nice cut de boeuf, properly cooked, and so many nice ingredients around. Best pairing ever with Thomas Gassac is roasted lamb, oh. a petite moussaka d'aubergine. You make moussaka down here? I think of moussaka as a Greek dish. He's asking if we do moussaka. We're in France. We cook everything. We rule the world of cooking, guys. This was my third time in the Languedoc, and the region constantly takes me by surprise. Not only is it one of France's most dynamic wine regions, it's possibly the most scenic. When it comes to reds, you'll find everything from good, inexpensive table wine to bottles that can compete with the great wines of the world. I'm a little sad to leave this slice of France, but I know I'll be back. There are more adventures to come with creative Fabian. Stay tuned to the channel for more.